my mother was um, Anglican, which is very rare in Ireland, which was, uh, it's called a mixed marriage, which is such a funny uh, term, because it sounds like, you know, a, a, a Serb marrying, right. uh, you know, Kosovo Albanian or whatever. different kinds of Christians. Like, of the, uh, right. but you d- it was an interesting, even as a kid, we'd go to the Anglican thing, which is very loose. You know, my mother is probably the most creative person I know, and she uh, she she worked as a secretary, and then because Dad was off doing his gigs, brought up my brother and my sister and I. My um, my great grandfather was one of the sort of secondary leaders I know of, the, of the revolution, <laughs> and which is a funny because I my my so my great grandfather was this man who looked at the sort of civil rights situation and went oh yeah this is worth possibly killing myself for I'm gonna uh-huh. I'm gonna organise he was like one of the heads of the IRB who were one of the big organisations and then as happened very common his son my grandfather Kevin then worked for the government was a civil servant sort of set up the tourist board and all of that dedicated his life to to the to the state and the country and, and then my dad's a jazz musician and I have a stand up comedian ah. so it's just sort of gone like <laughs> over time well, what if I if I said I want to Jew this coffee up and that meant make it less expensive yeah but you could argue that the Jewish people come from the tribes of Israel yes and whereas Irish people are like we're Vikings and Normans and Celts and English and Scottish yes you know we're just a made up island that was very angry for a long time right and was sort of crushed. So consequently, we... Kind of made up like this place. Australia. Yeah, made up like this place. Except the fact that Ireland has been around a bit longer than here in terms of white people. <laughs> Sorry, Australia. <laughs> I just I made the basic error there. <laughs> it's a poisonous cultural legacy, but uh, it's still... What do you mean? It's the... 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 the the suffering of Irish people over generations and, and all of that is pretty awful, you know. But it's nothing compared to, you know, what went on with uh, the Jews and the Gypsies of Central Europe or anything right, like that. Right. It just, I would, uh, someone once said that uh, the Irish struggle for independence is the most journalistically over-reported localised conflict in the world. Uh-huh. And that's probably true because of the nature of the famine and the millions of people going overseas and a lot of them becoming then cops and politicians and then journalists and writing about right, home. Right. So it's something that everyone knows about. The collapse of community, as we know it, yes. is a very interesting... Uh, so it's, it, it interests me a lot because I grew up in probably the most ethnically undiverse country in the world. As in, the Ireland that I grew up in was, uh, in 83, it was, what, 93 or 94%, not just white, but white Catholic. Mm. So there was this, homo- like, it was the highest church attendance rate in the world, Ireland and the Philippines, oh my God. in um, 81. I think it was like, it's something like 77% or maybe 67%. Anyway, it was just this enormous of people all doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And with that, that has mostly downsides to it. It was preposterously uh, unadventurous culture. Mm-hmm. It was also a sort of self-policing culture where people were also staring at each other going, oh, that's very strange. Morality, please, Weird. Sir. Just... Uh, um, no, it'd be more like, you know, if you didn't fit into the norm that had been created in this homogenous society, that's the downside. And if you didn't fit into this ideal, say if you were gay, it was just, what? No, right. you just, right. there was no place for you in this. Right. That is the horrible downside of it. The upside of it, though, was that if you, because everyone was pretty much the same, there wasn't a... Uh, there were richy riches in Ireland, but there were very few. There was most people belonged to a kind of a middle class. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a working class. There was mega riches, but most people, like the road I grew up on, it was jazz musician, uh, father, uh, a guy who drove a digger for the local city corporation, mm-hmm. and a doctor. And so we were all living on the same road, and all of our kids w- were playing together, and. Because everyone was so familiar, not with not necessarily with everyone else's business, but everyone's general modus operandi. Mm-hmm. When you went to the shop, and you looked a bit glum, the shopkeeper was Marietta, and she would go, "What's wrong with you?" 
Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like. Are you saying this in a good way? Yeah, I'm okay, saying yeah, this yeah. is the upside. It sounded like we went to a good place. The upside of that. Yeah. The downside being um, utterly freezing out anyone who doesn't fit into this. Right. The upside of it being it it, it was self regulating because right. everyone was open to everyone and everyone right. was quite similar. Knowing your neighbors, knowing your knowing neighbors, grocer. all of that. Even the idea that I. I grew up in uh, Sandy Mount, part of Dublin, and my granny uh, lived there as well. And then various members of the family were around. So for things like babysitting or anything like that, it was, yeah, we just get what's his name over. Right. But then also there were 10 other options on the road right, right, right. of people. And that's lost now. That's yeah. gone. Right. You know, in the case of Dublin, the uh, house prices went so ridiculous and the area that I grew up in became super posh. Really? So people couldn't afford to live there. So family are now scattered further around. Yeah. Um, people end up living in apartments where no one wants to live there. So you don't bother making friends with anyone because you have the aspirational Believe, thing of yeah. wanting to get out of there as soon as possible. And even getting to know the people who live is almost like an admission that I'm intending on staying here. I never even thought of it that way. Well, it's that thing that is true. In, in, but back to the community thing, you, you, you now, because we probably my generation so there's been the thank goodness that Ireland is gone now in the past Ireland went from the highest church attendance rate in the world in 1981 to the lowest in really? Europe now marriage rate is the lowest in Europe no you know like I've lived through this revolution that is comparable to uh, what happened in Eastern Europe in terms of the church just ran my country yeah and in 19 I think 89 uh, a woman went on uh, Ireland's premier chat show and said that she had a son with the Bishop of Galway. Hmm. And Ireland went, oh my goodness. He was The kid was like 11 or 12. And she said, and the Bishop has been paying out of church funds. And we were outraged. Mm -hmm. And that, <laughs> in terms of the tip of the iceberg, that is like the happiest story yeah. that was to come in the eon of darkness yeah. that has followed since then. Yeah. And it has caused everyone to question you mean everything. With the kid diddling and all that. But like stuff? all of that. Yeah. And them in cahoots with the government and the cover ups. Yeah. And channeling money yeah. into the church and then doing deals with insurance companies and then interviewing victims of child abuse and grilling them to, so that they make uh, their stories don't uh, have inconsistencies and paying lawyers then to go, you're lying, you're lying, you lied about this child abuse. Oh. You know, the most horrific. Um, I mean, this is just the Catholic side of things. You know, as it happened, there was a revolution in 1921. And as happens very often, there's a vacuum after the revolution. And the, the, the revolutionaries took over then. And revolutionaries traditionally are terrible politicians. Mm -hmm. but that's what happened. And political parties, there isn't really a left and a right in Ireland. There's two parties that came out of the revolution. They don't really have opposing policies. And very often... Uh, their sons then became uh, members of parliament mm -hmm. and sometimes their grandsons are now members of parliament. So you have these political dynasties not based around them being good leaders or idealists or politicians. It's a mess of a country. <laughs> the great French documentary was made in 68 called The Rocky Road to Dublin. It was an example of a country that had won its revolution but effectively lost its peace. Oh, like, what do you do? Yeah. And there's a very interesting comparison there with, say, Egypt today, which won this revolution and now various interests have piled into the vacuum to go, well, we are now the rulers of Egypt. Um, so Ireland, like, my country made a balls out of itself. And because no one, because the church and the government were in cahoots to sort of, I mean, mind control is too strong, but it's the downside of that idealistic white picket fence Ireland I described mm. was that no one really thought too deeply about is this structure that's governing our lives a, a good thing? It seems to be a requisite for the white picket fence. I, like, it's reminds Very me interesting. of 1960s yeah. America. Yeah, yeah. And so the revolution that I've lived through is the collapse of everything. Mm -hmm. And so now there is an interesting almost nihilism in Ireland, which mm. is what do we believe in? Yeah. The, the, the church, the, you know, the, yeah. the banks were in cahoots with the government. God. And there's, I do not believe in a single institution now. I treat, uh, I, you know, I, I, it sounds like I'm uh, 
it's almost back to a frontier of time. Yeah. Which is everything has shown well, that, itself to be tr- untrustworthy. Yeah, I mean, I was, I went to Catholic school. Yes. Uh, and I uh, said an awful lot of prayers. My parents certainly weren't very religious, but um, the uh, the understanding that I came to, like about 15 or 16, was that if God were to exist, and we can't be sure, I mean, I um, I get very angry at that sort of overly assertive atheism that is all the rage. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he slash she has given me the capacity and the rationale to decide in my opinion, that he slash she doesn't exist. So technically right. it's his slash her fault right. for me not believing I, in him I, slash her. Yeah. So uh, that said, I think um, morality is a, is it's something that exists. I don't mean it exists in the ether. I mean that I have a fellow feeling for those uh, around me yep. whereby I hope something terrible doesn't happen to you. Now, the problem with that is it definitely, you know, when I, if I hear about a bus crash in Dublin that 28 people die in, I get quite sad about it. Mm-hmm. And yet when I hear about one that happens in Nepal, like the bus toppling off a mountain, I probably don't feel as sad because it's, right. it's a fellowship to do with those people who uh, live around me. Right, right, right. Um, so it is, a once again, a flawed, very flawed system that doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. But uh, I, I have... I've got a, a lot of peace out of that idea of that that it's the morality doesn't necessarily collapse if you don't have a god head at the top of it. And there's an interesting uh, analogy there with the I voted for a, a political party a few years. I voted for the Green Party in Ireland, who uh, contributed very much to the collapse of the Irish economy. <laughs> and the click, the, the voting for them was almost the same as click. Like, you know, if iTunes just inserted into right. their thing and we um, own your soul, right? then I would still just, mm, yeah, but yeah, I need the new, I need the, the thing that where you can get the right. podcasts and it keeps down right, right, the right. new episodes, so it's fine. Right. You'd go for dinner and the dad wouldn't say anything to mum, just this horrible dysfunctional relationship. But because there was no divorce in Ireland until 1996, it wasn't possible for anything to happen. They 1996. Would just, they would st- they would stay together. Yeah, still no abortion in Ireland now. I mean, this is this is we're coming out of the grip of a a very conservative past. Oh wow. Yeah, that the 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 my favorite thing about the divorce referendum in '96 because I was in university at the time is that I was campaigning in favor of divorce with my friends. We were. We wore T-shirts with "Vote Yes" written on them. Really, and we would walk around the city. And do you know the No campaign slogan was "Hello, divorce, goodbye, daddy." That was on lampposts around the city. I know this is goodbye, look, daddy. Yeah, I've come from this. Yeah, this is what I've come from. Yeah. And we uh, we would hand out our leaflets. Yes. And we never met anyone because I went to Trinity, which is the old university in the centre of Dublin. Mm. Never met anyone who wasn't going to. You know, we obviously would go to outlining air, outlying areas, right. handing out our leaflets, vote yes, and people wouldn't take the leaflets because, like, yes, of course, vote yes. Oh, right. We're a modern European country. Right. It's 1996. Divorce right. got in uh, 52-48%. Fifty, and that's the divorce rate. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what that taught me is there is a world out there of people who absolutely disagree with everything you think. There is, you know, there is something. There is a, there is still reason to, to, to even though our Ireland is on its fucking our soul at the moment, and. It's really, really suffering. There is still something good about Ireland. There's an integrity yeah. to the place and there's an integrity to the people. And, you know, it's no longer just this 93% Catholic backwater. It's an actual country that right. people move to it and it's right. cosmopolitan. Right. You know, you can you can eat hummus 